<laughs> Michael! Michael, have you been... Well, this will air after the World Series, but do you watch... The, have you been watching it? Or did you watch it? I did. I mean, yeah, I've been following it. It was a long-ass game. I, I saw that. What? <laughs> Too long. Seven hours? Hi, bye! 18 innings. It's It was two games for the price of one. I, okay, I mean, if you're a baseball fan, it was exciting. <laughs> it's free baseball. That's that's true. What a good attitude you have, Michael. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, real quick, while you're listening to this, just remember that you can download the full episode today at midnight or Friday morning on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or you can even watch it on YouTube because we're only allotted an hour space here on Adobe Radio, so you can check out the rest of the good times on those formats. Uh, real quick before we start, I want to thank you guys, the listeners. You guys have been so loyal, so strong to the show, and I really, really thank you. Tweet at me. Tweet at the uh, at tweet at We Sam's World. Uh, tell us how much you love the show, and we'd love to hear from you. Again, we always do listener questions. Uh, we didn't post too much about it this week, but. Uh, hit us up with your listener questions. We'd love to hear from you. I'd love to answer your questions on air. Uh, give you some life advice from Wee Sam. Got too excited with that part. Don't care because uh, I'm prime time right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I love you guys. Seriously, thanks for all your support. Thank you to Adobe Radio for everything that you guys do. Thank you to Nice Guy Digital. Shout out to Brett and Katie. Shout out to you, Michael, for everything that you do for the show, and Steph Jula for all the social media amazingness that you do for us. Our guest today is Jason Dolly. You might know him from Good Luck Charlie, really successful Disney Channel show. He was so cool, so down to earth, nice guy. He has a new sketch uh, comedy uh, show that he's posting on his Instagram accounts. He's working a bunch of other guest spots on television. He's he he's hustling. As they would say, he's getting that bread. Jason Dolly, getting that bread. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Jason Dolly. Jason. Some. I like your dance moves. Oh, thank you. They're very similar to yeah, it's a, it's a shame that people at home can't see them. Although those, they can. Yeah, if they're going to watch the YouTube, the, YouTube. the YouTube crowd. Dude, can we, see got, it. we got all the latest technology here. Oh my god, it's 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 it looks very professional in here, I have to say. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, this is this is this is quality programming, ladies this, and gentlemen. This is Adobe Radio. It is Ido it's Adobe Radio. That's what it is. There you go. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the show, we said. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've never been welcomed on my own show before, so well, that's a I'm, first. Well, I'm glad I could be here to do that for you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, it's a day of firsts, Michael. It is? Yeah. And uh, you know what another first is? What? I've never seen you wear that jersey before. <laughs> you have. I know. I have. Actually. It happens a lot. That was a response actually, this and a <laughs> half right there. Actually, this might actually be the first time you've seen this particular one, because I've worn the other ones. Oh. How right. many do you have? Three or four. Okay. Well, that's a reasonable number. Yeah. Yeah. It's not too many. <laughs> but, it's, but it's enough that you could have too many jerseys, right? Oh, speaking of jerseys, so yeah. we went to Halloween Horror Nights with a bunch of friends. When? Uh, what? When did you go? Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Okay, it was literally it was there last night. Yeah. So oh, please, curious. please tell me you did the express tickets. No, we didn't. I so I I usually do that. Um, honestly, so we went at like six o'clock. Yeah. And we went to Stranger Things right away, and it was a half an hour wait. So oh. like, cool, that's fine. And then like the longest we waited was like, I want to say forty five minutes, fifty minutes for the tram. Are you crazy? No, Jason? seriously, yeah. No, and it was like that's too long. Oh no, it's fine. No, that's totally fine. Yeah. For you, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Oh yeah. man, I have got, I have done that the express tickets almost every other time. Yeah. So, but we went with like, do we have like ten people there? And like, and if if one person doesn't want to do the express ticket or whatever, you can't. You, you gotta. You, so it was it was more inclusive that way. So I was like, eh, it's fine. Um, but really, it was not that bad. Like I was expecting to have to wait for like you know a couple hours each time. But like the longest it was ever for us was like an, like fifty minutes. Dude, it wasn't bad. I have. It was had, honestly not bad. I can't. Thirty third. If I would have waited thirty minutes for anything, I would have been like, I'm out. I see. So you I'm, just don't do Disneyland at all then, huh? Oh no, I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Uh, uh, I do. Uh, 
<laughs> this is going to sound so douchey, but <laughs> we're just going to go with it. Um, since I work on an ABC show. Um, oh, know, did they do the guide for you? Yeah. Nice. And so, Good. No, they did that for me for years as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and they and they, they they still they still do sometimes. Okay, like, okay, if I yeah, ask yeah. Them, If I don't do it all the time, if I ask them nicely, right. sometimes they'll they'll do. It I've been me. spoiled. But it's, oh, it's the best. Oh no, no, that's belief. the best. Yeah, that's the best. Did you grow up here? Uh, most of my life in Oklahoma. Okay, so you don't have because I grew up going to Disneyland a lot. Yeah. So like I can go back without the guide and like because I went you know as a kid for years. Yeah. So I you know my first experience at Disneyland isn't going in the you know the back of the lines with the guide and everything so i have a little bit of a, that previous experience to to if i if i don't get the guide it's not the end of the world right yeah. I feel like if you if you only have gone with the guide then it's just you're spoiled beyond it. belief you just I, you J can't jason, help it jason you know you said you had if that one friend doesn't want to get expressed nobody gets expressed yeah, hey, yeah. you're not a friend <laughs> You're not in the group anymore. I don't care. We'll see you later. Hi, yeah. bye. Yeah. We're having a good time. Time is money. Yeah. And uh, no, we did the express thing. It, and it ruined me because I can't do it any other it's way. It's the best. It is, <laughs> we, I, I didn't think I could go back, but I, I did. We had zero weight. I think the most we honestly, without exaggeration, waited was probably five minutes. For yeah. Every, and we did eight, all the mazes. Yeah. Few rides. Was, uh, was Halloween good? Here's the thing. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. We, you know, we didn't have to wait, right? So we're right. going through all the lines. There was a pattern, I think, that we all began to notice oh, yeah. with the mazes. Sure. And Halloween was, it was good. But towards the end, I think we were just like, we get the bit. We get it, yeah. Yeah. And here's my issue with Halloween Horror Nights, Jason, no, since you sure. asked. Um <laughs> I think it needs to be scarier and in smaller groups. Scary. Uh, okay, yeah, so, right. So the the thing that, that sort of not kills it, but the, the, the hazard of going with a big group and the hazard of going in a, a thing with a lot of people is the people that go in front of you, if the scare happens to them and you see it, then it doesn't happen to you. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, yeah, um, ideally, I agree, like you have like, you know, a group of two people and you go in like each room individually. Kind of like an escape room, but like smaller, you know, each each room is, is separated. Yeah. And so you have to like experience all of the scares in that room. Um, Here, here's but that doesn't work as well for more people. So that's that's the that's the problem that you wind you wind up with when it's super popular and stuff. Y yeah. I don't have a better idea for you, Halloween Horror Nights, but there's there's something I've gotta start. <laughs> start. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but my thing is also like the I don't think it's a maze. Well, a maze is a bit of a misnomer. Yeah. Because there's yeah. only one way. It's a very simple maze. Guided. Yeah. You got people going like, come on, yeah. time is money. Yeah. There's no wrong way to go, <laughs> except to the exit, I guess. Right. Or yeah. um, attack one of the people. Mm. That is another wrong way to yeah. go. Yeah. They get really close to those, like, I tried fuzz back, back home. I actually did accidentally, like, reflexively hit someone. Oh. Did they get hurt? They just, like, stared me down as oh. I walked away. It can't be the first time they've been hit by somebody. Probably not. That, that happens all the time. It must. It's a hazard of the job. <laughs> yeah. Although I would I would honestly love to do that. Scare people? To be, like, to work at Halloween Horror Nights and, like, oh. be one of the people. that Because that's what I do, like, Halloween. Um, that's what I did for years is I would, <laughs> I would dress up in, you know, like a skull mask or whatever. And, and I would stand still yeah. outside of my, you know, my house or whoever's house I was at. And I would, you know, make people think that I was a statue. And then they would walk by me and just swing my arms at them. Although when I was a kid... We took a, we had a refrigerator box. Yeah. Then my friends had gotten a new refrigerator. And we cut a hole in the bottom of the box. <laughs> and we cut a hole in the bottom of a bowl. And then we took a, an empty, uh, it was a, a sour cream container. We took that, turned that upside down, cut an X slit in it, and glued that to the bottom of the bowl, glued the bowl to the top of the refrigerator box. And then we put a blanket over the whole thing. You get inside the refrigerator box, you fill the bowl with candy. Yes. Right? So then, and then... When people come for the candy, you reach your hand through. This is what I was doing when I was like eight years old. Wow! So this is this is my there's joy out of thing. That. Absolutely, and we and we recorded the whole thing too, which is probably illegal. But like, we recorded people like walking up and yeah. Maybe nowadays. Uh, Maybe uh, I don't know. You know, there's something interesting about that. What makes us so like what makes that so enjoyable? I love scaring people. I love pranking my friend Jonte yeah. Lagros constantly. Yeah. <laughs> I prank him all the time. I don't know why he's my friend still. <laughs> I don't know how he hasn't caught on yet. <laughs> I know. He has to he has to enjoy it to a certain extent <clears throat> if he hasn't 
Honestly, when you, out, when, you, like, when you sent the text about like getting all his vehicle information, I was like, it's another, is this another prank? Can I be honest with you? Yeah. <laughs> and if, yes, of course it was. If he would have given me his <laughs> VIN number, I'd be like, oh, <laughs> you don't deserve to have credit cards, sir. <laughs> oh, no. This guy, I love him to death. He's like my best friend. Right. But I constantly prank him and I, I enjoy it more than anything. Ever. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, real quick, I think we're having some that keeps going in and out. No, that that camera just keeps like. I oh, mean, okay. I'm, luckily I've been on another oh, camera okay, whenever gotcha. it happens, but. Okay, okay, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. It just, I just have to keep going. Back. I'm sorry, today's a, a weird technical day. Um, right. but, oh, so real quick, I saw on your Instagram, you're starting, Meat Grapes. Meat Grapes, which is a sketch yes. comedy sketch show. Sketch comedy group, yes. And if people don't know you, you've, yes. you've worked in TV for a while. Yes. Uh, one of your more notable notable roles uh, from Good Luck Charlie, yes. correct? Yes, and sir. You're, is, is that on Disney as well? Is that a, yes, a, Disney. Disney. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's another Disney star. It's not on my. I can't think of it. The other show. Yeah, the other Disney. Corey show. House. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you've been in TV for a while now. Yes, sir. And now you're going into the sketch. Yes. Sketch world. That's pretty yeah. exciting. Uh, yeah. And, and and Instagram too is sort of a new uh, realm for me, because mm. um, I I didn't I don't really understand social media in a in an intimate way. Like I don't yeah. like I have followers, but like I don't always know what they want to see. And so with meat grapes, I'm like, well, I know this is dumb and it makes me laugh, so I can just put that up and we'll see what happens. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. If you enjoy what you're putting out there oh, absolutely. and it's the real you. Abs it is, yes. Oh, then yes. it almost doesn't matter what they It really doesn't. They say. No, it doesn't. Which, I, is, which is very freeing. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think it's it, it becomes almost like a like a a prison sentence when you've kind of done something constantly on social media that you don't want that you don't like. Once you've established that brand and then you have to sort of stick to the brand and you're like, This isn't me. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda sucks. Well. Wow. Do you feel like that with like being a quote unquote D Disney star? Do you feel like you had to break a mold to a certain extent, or you, or do you feel like you've been kind lucky of. enough? Uh, yeah, kind of. I I don't know that I, because I never did like the singing and dancing that whole thing. I I, I mm. was never I was never that you know into that was never you know that because I'm not a singer. Yeah. Um, so I feel like uh, yeah, I didn't because like, you know I I was going out for for other stuff after the Disney Channel was over and yeah. uh, not a lot was was hitting for me as far as work goes. I don't know that that was necessarily because, you know, oh, he's the Disney kid and we can't hire him because we're thinking of him from all these Disney shows. I don't know what was because of that. I don't know that it wasn't because of that. Um, but yeah, the, the short answer is maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I may, maybe I did have to, because now I'm, I'm working much more consistently, uh, which is great. Um, but I, I didn't, I don't feel like I had to like break the mold. I think it was just a matter of time before, I don't know, it was the age that I was, that I was, you know, yeah. I was 23, 24. Like there's just not a lot for people that age sometimes, at least when I was doing it. You know, I heard a great piece of advice and I forgot who told it to me, but for actors, when you're kind of in a certain age range and you're going out with, you know, and, and casting directors are seeing you yeah. all the time, they kind of see you in that age range. So whenever totally. you, so whenever you start, like, I feel getting towards the end of that age range mm -hmm. or like I'm not I don't think I can play like 15 or 16 anymore it's like yeah. they kind of have to be like repitched about you like no look at him now like he's actually in another age group and that that can be kind of challenging I that's like. yeah that's exactly what's been happening for me yeah um yeah new manager this year uh and has been, been, been pitching me in a, in a different way and I've been going out for older stuff um yeah. you know more age appropriate stuff I guess yeah, you say yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Shout out to Stagecoach. Absolutely, Stagecoach Entertainment, uh, Taylor Bright and Steve Smith. Yeah, shout <laughs> out to they are fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, they're getting yeah. that bread. They oh absolutely <laughs> yes. That's the term, right? Getting yes, the bread. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I can't keep up with all the uh, the new colloquialisms of the internet. Oh, I don't yes. think I've said that correctly, but they're constantly changing. Yeah, like memes and evolving, and yes. Like I, I work with a bunch of like twenty two year olds at ICM in the mailroom and they're all like using words like lit and I'm like I don't I feel like I lit is dead though I, no they love lit really is it because you work in lit oh I was gonna make that joke and I couldn't figure out how to oh. get like the right execution of it but that's <laughs> comedy baby that works, that works well enough <laughs> <laughs> we lost half our listeners shit <laughs> yeah absolutely we did but that's Damn fine it. um 
what how would you describe the sketch uh, comedy stuff you're 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 gonna you're doing or you're gonna start putting out? And... Um, very dumb. Okay. Does that does that help? <laughs> um, yeah. The the first video we posted is uh, it's two cavemen and they're they're the the one that's me is sharpening a spear. Yeah. And he holds it up to his friend and he says, uh, "Me do it. Me invent spear. Me genius." And the other guy looks at me and goes, "Big deal. You not here." Grog discover fire, and it like whip pans over to this other guy, this other caveman who's yeah. behind a like a turntable, and he's playing like he's playing EDM music, and they went fire. <laughs> that's that's our first video that we posted, and that, there's plenty more like it to come. It's I can't wait to just, see this. It's stuff. so dumb. It, if it makes me laugh and I think it's stupid, then then we do it. You know, I I get it. No, yeah. you I get like it. That. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, I like that kind of stuff. Good, good. Well, there's there's a lot of it coming. <laughs> Follow me, Graves. <laughs> have you ever have you ever seen Good Neighbor stuff? Uh, maybe Good Neighbor. Uh, who's who, who's in that? Okay, um, is that Kyle Mooney's? Thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Dude, yeah. I saw. I used to watch that before they blew up. The yeah. Two, the two one of the the two of the main guys, and I was like, dude. These guys are really good. Yeah, I watched a lot of like you know there's a there's a ton of internet sketch comedy groups. And yeah, uh, like Balloon Shop and Whitest Kids You Know. And yeah, those are some uh, inspirations White, for White us Rabbit, for sure. I think or White something Rabbit, Rabbit. I don't know. They do the uh, the the magic uh, skits with um, oh my gosh that weird magician magician. Gosh, I forget what it is. Anyway, the weird magician, Chris Angel or whatever. Not that Chris was my Angel. first thought too. There's another magician who does like David street... Blaine. David Blaine. David I think. Blaine. Yeah. Wait, that that David Blaine parody thing? Where yes. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. obviously, yeah. That's the only one that I that I know of theirs yeah. though. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're really good. They're, they're great. Yeah. Well, Good Neighbor stuff. What what impressed me was the fact that like it wasn't like shot crazy good. It was actually shot no. like a normal amateur camera work. Sound was good, which was important. But the acting in it and the characters they came up with were so like. Uh, some of it was so awkward, like Kyle's like interview guy. Do you know? What I'm yes, about? he just like mumbles stuff. And Dude, it is. <laughs> Jason, he's I, amazing. I love cringe yeah. things. Yeah. Did you see Brigsby Bear? No. What is last that? year, Brigsby Bear. It's uh, Kyle Mooney did a movie called Brigsby Bear, uh, where it's this guy who was raised in this compound by people he thought were his parents that aren't his parents. Uh, and he gets like broken out, but he, it's Kyle Mooney. It's like this. It's kind of like the the interview guy he does, but yeah. it's not. It's more, I guess, genuine is the way I would put it. Like he's a real, like three dimensional human being. Okay. Like, he's not like a joke line. Oh, it's, like, a, like movie, a, movie. it's a movie. It's a movie. Yeah. Oh, like oh. Mark Hamill plays his quote, quote unquote dad. Uh, this is last February. This came out. It's a it, fantastic movie. Kyle Mooney is incredible in it. I would highly recommend that you watch. Oh, Rigsby Bear. I definitely will check yeah. that out. Yeah. He's, He's very interesting with his character choices. Um, what what is this one? Brigsby Bear. Oh, Brigsby Bear. Okay. It just plays part of the trailer. Yeah. Oh. This yeah, is and amazing. so the the Brigsby Bear is the the TV show that his that his quote unquote dad makes for him. Whoa. His dad like goes to a yeah. So it's like how he learns like math and stuff. Yeah. His dad makes this TV series for him. Cool, cool. cool. Yeah. Oh, and there's and he uh, yeah, and, and Kyle Mooney just brings such like heart and 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 vulnerability to the character yeah. that could have otherwise been, you know, one of his like joke characters, but it's not. That's so it's crazy. really good. I think I, I'm curious to see where his career evolves. Yeah. I hope it goes that route, like into really in depth character work. Because mm -hmm. one of his characters was Jeff Chandles, the uh, Chandles. stand up comedian. Okay. Who, do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, vaguely, yeah. He has the worst <laughs> jokes ever. <laughs> and there's a skit where he's going into a voiceover work, like he's doing voiceover work for mm. something, and he keeps making horrible jokes to like the producer trying to just get him in the room and just say the lines and he just keeps like oh it's so hard to watch as an actor i'm like <laughs> shut up and just say the lines this is so that's also a thing you're, the auditions you've gone to yeah. have you ever had something where you're you a part like an acting partner 
in the audition, like maybe for a commercial or something, and they're just like terrible. Uh, well, usually for you know like film and television and stuff, you're going right. by yourself. Uh, I have not gone in a lot of commercial auditions. Okay. Um, I I did when I was like I, like a kid, like a, like really young, and I would go in and I, I just never booked them. I don't. I was not like I was not a commercial. Like, like I have a commercial agent still. I, I go out every now and then, but. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing from asking that question that, that that you have some experiences like that. <laughs> when I used to go out commercially, all the time. Yeah, that's yeah, that's tough. Because th- there'd be there'd be usually the guy in there or person who really need really wanted a book really mm-hmm. and was doing everything and more than what they were needing, and you're just like, oh, yeah. oh okay, this is what we're doing today. Yeah. yeah. This hour and a half drive to Santa Monica has been so worth it. <laughs> oh, I'm going back in rush hour traffic. Oh, great. cool. Oh, we're done? Oh, uh, five minutes? Oh, great. Cool. Yes. Cool. Cool. I'm going to go contemplate my life choices for the next yeah. hour and a half. Yeah. We've all had those drives, I think. Absolutely. Where we're driving Absolutely. back. Yeah. How do you get over those bad auditions then? That quote unquote bad auditions, the ones that you feel like, yeah, Man, what did I, um, where did I go wrong? <laughs> you know? Yeah, uh, it it usually just takes time for me because <laughs> okay, I, right. I don't I don't really have a secret to be like oh you know you 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 go do this and then you're and then you're past it like if if it's a really bad audition it's just gonna hurt for a couple of days that that it was that bad um, I I can't remember the last time it's been that bad but I I had a, a spell of and it still kind of rears its head every now and then a spell of like anxiety. Uh, that I would get in an audition room. That didn't used to happen for even not even in, just in auditions, acting at all. Mm. Uh, yeah, like it was out of nowhere. Like I, you know, I grew up doing this. Like I, I've been doing it my entire life. I think there was just some. I think as you get older, you get more anxious. Generally speaking, and so for whatever reason, like for the past like three or four years, I would go into audition rooms sometimes, and I would just be like, I remember one time, like my entire body was shaking. As if I was shivering from the cold, but oh. I was just reading a. I was going in for a guest star role, like it was very basic, like nothing, you know, too involved. And I walked out of there going, like, "What is, <laughs> what is happening with me right now? This is what I've been doing my entire life. What's going on?" And to be honest with you, I, it still happens sometimes. I don't know what it is. I think it's just a thing that is part of my life now, where I'll just wow. get anxiety sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. I think especially because auditions are. You're always doing it for the first time when you go in there. Like you can pr- you can practice it and you can have a friend read it with you or whatever. But when you go in there, you're always doing it. You're always performing it for the first time. And regardless of when, whenever you're performing a piece of any kind for the first time, it's always going to be a little rough. You're always going to be feeling out, you know, when are they going to say their line? How long am I going to wait for this? You know, what's the, what's the what's the feel of the scene going to be with this person when I'm, that I'm performing with? Um, and that's often the time that they're, th- that first time you're doing it is often the thing they book you from. And that's nerve wracking because you don't, you, sometimes you don't get a second shot and you're just, you're, you're, you're doing the rehearsal basically. You're shooting the rehearsal. Um, so that's, that's part of it, I guess. Part of the anxiety, yeah. um, is cause I want to just get through it once. I want to get through it once and then we can play with it, you know, but you don't get that, that luxury in, aud- in auditions. No. Most of the time. I mean, unless they, unless they like you and then they go, oh, you know, let's try this or, you know, let's give you some, some direction. Then, you know, yeah. then you get a second chance. But sometimes you just go, cool, bye. I'm like, oh, I just, can we do, can we do a little more? No, okay, bye. Can I tell you my secret, what it's helped me please, tremendously please. with that? And I've mentioned it before a, a bunch of times on the podcast, and I don't care. I'm going to keep mentioning it because it's literally garnered extreme results, positive results. Really? I have a trusted friend and colleague who's extremely serious about the craft, really good actor. Um, and what we did was we meet every single Sunday morning. We talk acting, we talk life, and like we have a, go get coffee somewhere. And then what we'll do, what we, what we first began doing was give each other cold reading scenes, scenes he hasn't seen or scenes I haven't seen. And then we'll go into this like little empty office space and then we'll just run them over and over and over and over again mm. and we'll try them different ways we'll go like you know what i know this this is not the character but i'm just going to try doing it this time like i am a really horrible boss even though it says he's a great boss i just want to play with it going to that extreme just yeah. to see what i find 
and then we'll do it like in these extreme ways. And we found that once we were able to be honest with ourselves in the room, because we would never give each other direction. It would always be like, oh, that definitely didn't feel right. Or that was that part was good. Or, oh, I, I didn't realize that was there. Can we try that again? Or, hey, can we can we pace it up just to see what happens? Yeah. Whenever we'd go into auditions and we get like feedback or like we, we were like, oh, yeah, I know how to kind of bend that way. I've been doing it every Sunday now for right, a while. Cool, right. I'll go. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know how to do that. Cool. And the anxiety of sh- shit, like I didn't do it well enough that last time. Or now they're giving me redirection. Did I not do it good? You know what I mean? That went away completely. Oh, interesting. Oh, so I have the opposite experience where if I get direction, you, I relax. Oh, awesome. Because that means, That's because lucky. to me, that means there's something I'm doing that they like. There's something about me that they're like, you could work for this. Let's see how you work under pressure. Let's see how you work with, you know, to change this, you know, give you a little direction. Are you malleable? Yeah. And I know that I am. So once I get, once I get to that point, I'm golden. It's that first read through that gets in my head. That's so, you know, that's so lucky. That's just a cool thing that you do though, to, to, to th- that dedication to your, to your craft, to do that every week. And, and that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm doing it even during shooting of the show. Yeah, too. yeah, and then totally. Some, and this is sometimes he'll get like a self tape, like, oh, let's work on the self tape then. Right, we'll yeah. Tape it there. I think that's so critical. It's like our gym. It's our dojo. We Absolutely, yeah. Well, that's that's how I look at. Uh, I have an acting class I go to on Tuesdays, Excellent. and it's the same thing. Yeah, yes. You, you, it's like you, you go to the gym, and as long as you, you, everybody shows up and you all do your work and you go home, and that's that's it. it doesn't matter, you know, as far as like ability level, it's it's, it's irrelevant. You leave that at the door. You leave you leave all yes. the you leave all your your career. You leave all your you know your your credits. All that's at the door. You come into work. You come into to play. You come into work out, and that's it. I love that, man. Yeah, that's that. That makes me so happy to hear that you're, you're in an acting. Class. I love hearing when a- actors are in acting class. I'm like, it, you have great. To. Then you're getting better. Yes, exactly. That's plain and as simple. As long as you keep getting better, you, that's that's all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Are you allowed to say what acting class or? If yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, they, yeah, it's a young actor space okay. in uh, in Van Nuys. Awesome. Yeah, it's a place I went to when I was like, fourteen. Like it's called Young Actor Space. There's an adult class also. It's most of the most of the adult classes people that have um, grown up there that are like don't want to go anywhere else. That like know the people that you know run the space and they yeah. want it. They're like we want an adult class. That's basically how the adult class start got started. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 fantastic, and you know the the, the, the people there are great. The class environment is is fantastic. Good. I'm like writing scenes for myself like every week to do uh, with with my scene partners and stuff. It's it's. It's a good. It's a good place. I, I yeah. dude, I cannot express that enough to, to actors. You got to learn a little bit of the cross disciplines. Absolutely. That, that come across yeah. as acting. Learn a little bit of directing. Learn a little bit of lighting. Learn yep. a little bit of writing. Dude, one of the major complaints that reps have, is like they don't know how to self tape that well, like mm. like technical things, mm-hmm. like it's all profile. <laughs> like hey. Right, yeah. We need to see your face, man. At least get your face on there. At least get it like decently lit. Like, yeah. Help or, us out. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. like, you're looking everywhere in the scene, and there's one person. Like, you need to like pinpoint where that person is yeah. because we don't know who you're talking to. So it's that's stuff like, like that. self direction, right? Like that. That's like you know directing yourself and watching your tape back and going, okay, I you know I looked all over the place, or I was nodding my head a bunch when I spoke, or whatever it was. Yeah. You seem to me. And I, I don't know you that I don't know you at all. Actually, I just met you today. That's true. Uh, that Our have, entire relationship has been documented. It isn't that weird. That's an interesting perspective. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um, you seem like you have good self awareness. Where do you think that comes God, I from? I hope so. Self awareness. Um, where does that come from? I mean, I think it starts with with family. Oh. Right with the way that you're, the way that you're raised, and the way that you, um, you know, because my my mom has was has been involved in my well was involved with my career when I was you know eleven and for a long time, and I think I'm also lucky because I'm from I'm from Simi Valley, which is not that far. I'm actually going out there today. I'm going to a bachelor party out there with people that I've known for my entire life, nice. um, and I think I think that helps, especially growing up in the business. Uh, it it really helped me to have people that I'd known my entire life, who knew me, who know me separately from my career, um, to sort of remind me, hey, you're just a, you're a person, you know. Especially in those formative years, 
Um, now, uh, my self awareness. That's a. That's a. That's a. That's a sort of a deeper, a deep question. I like it. Um, Here's can I while you're thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, this yeah. is why I ask. It's critical, I think, for actors to have self awareness. Yes. And me going throughout the world, I notice some people do not have that self awareness. Yeah. Case in point, back to the beginning, I forgot to mention the the, the Jersey story. We were in lines at oh. Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> oh, oh, right, right. Yeah. And I'm sure the listeners like, thank God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got back, people. We, we got circled back. back. Um, they, this guy comes up to Michael in a very awkward. I'm I'm talking about super awkward, and goes, where did you, where did you get that jersey? He was wearing a jersey, and Michael, Bears. It, yeah, it was wearing a Chicago Bears jersey, and Michael was just like, the the internet, <laughs> like. It was very like I don't know how to describe it. You had to be there. This might not be he the. To this is actually not a great story. Now that I'm telling it back again, <laughs> you actually really had to be there. He wanted to know where you got the jersey. And oh, he, that, oh, that's the part. He was blown away by by the fact that it was on the internet. And it was just a very like. It, it was a new player on the Bears, Khalil Mack. So. Okay. I, but it's like. Okay. But it's like yeah. The internet. Yeah. Because, yeah, now I'm, I'm, for a while there I was picturing the guy who didn't know you could buy jerseys. Like, who, love, who like, loves sports that much, but didn't know you could buy a jersey. Like, that's the only explanation I could have. But if it's a new player, maybe then he's like, oh, wait, that guy just got traded. How did No, no, no. How? It wasn't even, like, just. It was, like, at the beginning of the season. Oh. It, it's, it seems very – see what I mean? We don't know. It was yeah. very awkward. See what he's caused, this yeah. ripple effect? So it's that kind of self-awareness where <laughs> it's like, you know, not to, like, just grab a stranger and, hey, where'd you get that? <laughs> right, know? yeah. Like, the internet. I, I, is everything okay, sir? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And small things like people in lines, they're right behind you instead of giving you some space, you know, like that kind of self-awareness. Yeah. Um, I get it, honestly. I, I meditation helps me become a little bit more self-aware, living in the moment, mm. um, oh, body awareness, okay, that yeah. kind of stuff. I, yeah, I think I think honestly, for me, acting gets me there. Okay, um, because as you know, when you're acting, you are if you're if you're really connected and you're really present in the moment, you are thinking about the other person as much as you're thinking about yourself. You're thinking about your other, you're thinking about your scene partner, but you're also thinking about this relationship, this who these people are to each other, where they're all coming from in this moment. And the more that you do that, the more you practice that, I think the more that it winds up bleeding into your, at least for me, bleeding into my everyday life, where I'm constantly thinking about, you know, if somebody says something like that, like, hey, where'd you get that jersey? I, you know, you have that moment of like, wait, how do I deal with this? And then after you go, okay, so, Almost like, what was his motivation? Yeah. You know, what was his day like that brought him to that? You know, what's, what was his mental state like that made him say those things? And so then now I'm thinking about where he came from as opposed to what, what I saw, which was strange and unsettling perhaps. But I think that acting in that way trains you to go to, to think of the other person in that way and to be empathetic um, in – most moments. Most moments, yeah. For me, yeah. I was not, I I almost started laughing, and I had to just walk away because it was so uncomfortable. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, I, oh let me just walk forward. It's really bizarre. It's very. We were in the express line, thank God. So uh -huh. we could just, <laughs> just. So he he was in the he was in the general admission line. No express. Oh oh, he was with you. Oh, yeah. okay. So you couldn't just like skip past him. No. And yeah. But it was moving. Yeah, you know, like we said before, they're just you can just you can just go, okay, like, go, 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 get go, go, scared. Get scared. Started, get just, scared. Okay. <laughs> Is this part of the maze? <laughs> um, yeah, man. I don't know. That's that's really cool though. That you that acting is the tool that helps you become more. I think so. Yeah. I'll I think so. I, I, living in the moment is a, is a crucial thing. Being present yeah. in the moment. And yeah. for me, whenever like I meditate, I I'm becoming more and more aware of whenever my mind starts to wander, mm -hmm. and instead of judging it. I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, I, I'm I'm realizing when my mind wanders. Right. Let's yeah. Let's bring it back. Yeah. Let's bring it back. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. So meditation for you, I, 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 I've never meditated myself. Mm. Uh, d d talk about that a little bit. Like, what's like, what's your 
is that is that a what's the what's the process of that like for you? I mean, are, what kinds of things are you are you are you telling yourself things? Are you just trying to empty your mind? Like what's a what does meditation mean for you? It it, dep it depends on the type of meditation and okay. the, and the, and the goal of the meditation. I feel like I think one of the types of meditation that I like to do is just focusing on breath. That's all I need yeah, to focus on. Yeah, sure. And I'll notice that, oh, my mind is starting to wander when I'm just focusing on breathing, being calm, being present in the moment where I am, being present of my body. Oh, I'm in this room. I'm with Jason. I'm with Michael. I've got this mic in front of me. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, this is where I am right now. All the little things that your mind starts to do um, might go down a negative path, might go down a, you know, imagination land. literally thinking about the thing you have to do later today or right. the next Not week, the, like, yeah, no, just clearing I'm present. all that out. And okay. when that happens for me, I settle in em emotionally, physically. I feel my body change mm -hmm. subtly. And mentally, there's this, like, middle ground that I'm at. And whenever I, I practice that more consistently, I realize any problems that come throughout the day, I'm able to apply that tool, that, that, that way of just be present, what's really the problem? Okay, great, it's not as bad as I am right. thinking it's gonna be. Yeah, it sounds like I, I do meditation then. <laughs> oh, okay, well yeah. then. <laughs> if that's how you're describing meditation, then yeah, I think I do that sometimes. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool, man, that yeah. comes naturally to you. I think so, yeah. You seem to have had a good upbringing then. Uh, yeah, I, I that's very lucky. I think so. Yeah, um, yeah. Again, like I'm from Southern California, it, d doing this this acting thing. That can, you know, if you're if you're not from here, you it basically you have. I mean, you you moved here. How old were you when you moved here? Uh, to L.A. It was nine and a half years ago, so probably twenty twenty one. Okay, twenty one, twenty one. Okay, so yeah. you, you were so you were not grown completely, but you were through you know. Barely through elementary puberty. school, yeah. right? Yeah. Barely through pu puberty. Right, time. yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're all still going through puberty. <laughs> we are. Um, I feel like that has, especially in the younger years, that it can have such a dramatic effect on a family dynamic, on a person, you know, on your sense of identity as a, you know, growing up, you know, adolescent individual. Yeah. Um, and of course, I still have all, had all those questions as far as who I was and all that. But I always had home base. I always had people that I had grown up with my oh, entire life. I, cool. I, it's it's easy to take that for granted, but I I try not to. Um, Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, that makes is, me really happy. That's why I'm I'm seeing them all today. I'm seeing like eight guys that I've known my entire life. Yeah. And this like, or it's a bachelor party, and we're gonna do like, uh, do all those like events. We're gonna play disc golf and like probably beer pong and stuff. To like yeah. you know, the winner's gonna get a prize. It's very very tame as far as bachelor parties go, but that's gotcha. that's very much uh, that's very much who we are to each other. Nobody's getting tased. I don't. Th well, oh, that's possible. Love that. That kind of stuff is possible. Love it. Yeah, I, I don't think there's gonna be strippers showing up, but like that people, somebody might get hurt. Yeah, that's more likely. <laughs> well, if it's more likely that tasers will come out than <clears throat> strippers. Well, uh, if, you, if you like people getting shocked, I highly recommend you checking out our first Guys Night podcast that I did here with my two friends. Okay. Yeah, where we played a game called the No Laughing Game, and if you laugh, you got shocked. You get shocked. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. It's with a with a BDSM taser. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we I like did you, not. I like that you brought that mic very close to you and very just sort of whispered BDSM taser. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> we have a guest. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome though. That's very, very lucky. Then, what, then how about this? What do you say to people out there right now who don't have that type of home base? structure in their life they don't have that rock yeah. that anchor how do they go about finding that uh that's a great question yeah i don't know um because it's it's really just about finding supportive people that see you do you know what i'm saying and so I would say you know, my my instinct would be to go to an acting class, uh, several acting classes. I mean, if that's what you're here for, to be an actor, like mm -hmm. go find people, go find people who are in the same situation that you are, who are out here, you know, away from their families, away from their homes. Maybe they brought their mom or their dad with them, um, but that are away from their siblings, away from their friends and family, their pets, whatever. Find people like that, so that you can at the very least commiserate, but at the at the best, you can you can bond and you can, you know, you can see each other 
where you're at and hopefully start to form some kind of, you know, some kind of base. Yeah. I think... Is my first thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would like to add a little footnote and kind of a warning. When you said... It's sometimes... I, I noticed years ago, a lot of actors like joining small communities mm-hmm. of people who um, complain or focus oh, on the yeah. negative. Oh, yeah, well, that, that doesn't so, help. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So fo- when, with the community that you find, make sure it's a positive mindset absolutely. and realistic at the same time. Yes. Because, man. That's the hard thing. That's the hard thing to yes. find, really, yeah. I mean, we all complain every now and then, which is cool. You but have to. I've known people where I'm like, you know what? I, oh, that's just your whole thing, complaining. You, I yeah. never, literally, every time I see you, something is, you are complaining about something. I've never mm-hmm. seen you not complain. I've known you for now. This is a new person, of course. Like, probably months, almost a year? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's yeah, it's too long. It's too long to just be doing that. Dude, a yeah. year of complaining. Yeah. That's crazy. And, like, I don't know how old you are, um, but... I'm 31. Time flies. Yeah, I'm 27. I'm I'm genuinely starting to see that and feel that for myself. <laughs> I feel older every day. It's cool, but it's also it's real. Yeah. Yeah. It and especially in this town, it feels like because mm-hmm. and, and on compound that with these things that constantly what's trending. Every month, there's something new. Every minute, there's something new. Yeah. There's a new video going on. You know this what I mean? Is why, this is why social media is so exhausting for me because I, I never feel like I am on, on trend. I never feel like I know what's happening. I feel like I hear about stuff and then it's gone. And that's just, it's just not my scene. It's not my, it's not my bread and butter. It's kind of addictive. I hate it when I wake up in the oh, morning. Oh, yeah. No, totally. I, yeah, and I hate when I wake up in the morning I looking at my phone Yeah. immediately. It's like, yeah, and I, I do that too. You, you, that's the first thing you do, right? You wake up, you, you, you're you on your side, and you're scrolling through whatever, Facebook or, or Instagram or whatever it is. And I, you sit there, and you, you try to be sort of mindful, right, of what you're doing. And you go, what am I looking for? What, what, what am I hoping to see? Yes. Because there's always that when you scroll, there's this, like, hope of seeing something. And then you don't see it, so you keep going. But, like, what is it that I'm hoping to see? Because that's what, that's what addicts you, right? You're expecting to see something, and you don't. But you want to see the thing, but you don't. You, I think you're more addicted to not getting the thing you want to see because that, that's what keeps you going, right? If you find the thing you want to see, oh, then yeah. you just see it, and you're, you're done. What you're addicted to is not getting the thing you want to see. But what is the thing I want to see to begin with? I don't know. I'm just scrolling. It's, it's, it's not totally mindless because I know I want something, but I don't know what the thing is I want. So what am I doing? You just hit something on for me. Great. Before I booked this show that I'm on, I would always see what auditions I had coming in. Was there any callbacks? Mm-hmm. Was there any? So that's what I was looking for for the email. I'd right. be like refresh. Oh, totally, absolutely, hundred okay. percent. Twenty minutes later, refresh. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's that. Especially when you're like, hey, you're pinned, and you're just like constantly mm-hmm. looking at your phone. You're like, All yep. Right. Yep. You just gotta wait. But that 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 can't be healthy though. Uh, no. There's no. Yeah. That's. I mean. I. 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 I do that mentally. Like. I'm like. Okay. This is. This is the day I'm gonna hear. Am I gonna hear today? Nope. Oh. Seven o'clock. Nope. Gonna hear. There's still time. Nope. Okay. Nope. Day's done. Nope. Yeah. But yeah. Yep. Man. What a crazy time we're living in. I sometimes think about the time where before all this, before like re- like real internet, where we had dial up. You know what I mean? Mm, and it was mm-hmm. like a whole process. Briefly remember that. Yes. <laughs> I have to call my friends on the like a landline. Hey. Oh, yeah. You had to actually come... remember their numbers. Yeah, right? Yeah. You had them memorized. <sighs> yeah. Hey, do you want to hang out? Do you want to come ride bikes in the neighborhood until yeah. the sun goes down? Because yeah. that's when we're supposed to be home. Right. You get a new watch. You're like, whoa, watches. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember I got, a, I got a CD Walkman when I was like, I don't know, 10. And, dude, it was cool. Bass boost? Maybe. Whoa. The little I don't switch on the side. Base <laughs> oh, 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 yes, 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 yes. You know what, Michael? Absolutely, yes. Let's pull up some old school CD Walkmans. Dude, I loved it when it would like not skip the really thick ones. So it's like you can run with it. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the anti skip. Oh, look at it. Let's see this. Oh, Yo, yeah, my yes. Gosh. Wow. Dude, yeah, I'm seriously getting so nostalgic. Like, like all these memories. <laughs> How much are, are those going for? Twenty bucks. 
Oh, that's not that bad. No. You can listen to your old mixed CDs and actually yeah. did you see the uh the uh article that said that most um young people don't know what like a mix a mixtape is or a yeah. mixed CD, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were like, "How do you burn a CD?" I, th- oh, I think right. I saw something like it that. It was like, it's "Yeah, like, that was a oh. yeah, like fuck Jerry or something." I saw that like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. know how to burn a CD." See like, how yeah. it's so funny that we follow these like main meme accounts and they're like, yeah. "Oh, I know that joke. I saw that on my Instagram right, feed." Right, right. Man, it's weird. It's it's kind of, I'm kind of nervous where it's gonna evolve into. Hmm. What what what's what do you what do you see? What do you foresee being? Well, that, you, you just don't know. I, that's we what scares know. me. Yeah. That's what makes me nervous. Excuse me, not scared. Excuse me. Um, oh wow, Ebom's world. <laughs> oh, dude, I still visit that. That is, yes, that's the that that is my that's like middle school right there. Middle school, like early high school. Can it's we my entire existence that and like Weeble stuff? Did you ever go on Weeble stuff? Sounds familiar. Homestar Runner. Yes. Homestar yes. Runner. Thank God. Thank God. Salad knows fingers. What Homestar... Yes. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Salad fingers. Okay. <laughs> I still visit Ebom's world, just so you know. Great. Because I have to see what's the viral nowadays. Yeah. Oh, do they still have that? And I was seeing if you could find on you probably it'd be easier to find it on YouTube instead of Ebom's world. One of the first videos I saw of the kar- guy in a karate outfit. He has a bear. The bear starts attacking the lady, and he starts having to chop the, like he's like slapping the bear to stop. And then I again, seen these are all martial arts related. I don't know why, but the guy who's like he has like an afro. He has two nunchucks, and he does this like. He like goes, what's up at the camera? Tries to do the backflip and just eats it. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe that one sounds more familiar than the than the karate chopping bear one. You remember the Ebom's World soundboards? Absolutely. I never, I never went on them. I never, oh, I never used them I know what effectively, they are, but, but like, my friends did. That's the, crazy. The Al Pacino ones. I know there's a there has to be a prank in there somewhere with Jante I could pull with soundboards now. Maybe that's our next thing oh, with yeah. Jante soundboards. If you have any <laughs> ideas, let they're me know. Like, they're like so old that they, he won't expect them. Like yeah, they're so exactly. out of you know, vogue that they, he'll be like, what? How does, what is this? I, uh, that's a great Jante impression, by the way. Oh, great. Spot on. I thought so. <laughs> I did, as I was doing it, I was like, oh, this is a good impression of a I'm person no... I've never met or heard in my entire life. Right? Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, if we find the backflip video, let me know. Um, I remember watching that in high school and laughing my butt off. Mm-hmm. And like, this is the funniest things in the world. The, ones I, the one I always quote to my friends is the end of the world. The end of the world, yeah. yeah. What's that? Don't tell you have end of the world? The uh, end of the, the world. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, what is that? How does it start? Okay, uh, here's okay. the here's earth. Here's the earth. Uh, all the thing, that's the sweet earth, you might say. Round? Okay. So, but, and there's that, all the, like, the, the all the different countries have all the different nukes. Is this Homestar Runner? No, 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 this is Ebon's oh. World. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I was like, yeah. this accent I'm not familiar with. Time to check the email. That's, that's strong bad. Oh, oh, no, this, I've this never seen this. On its way, it's classic to... middle school. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, now I'm kind of like, I want to go home and just look up all this stuff. That's like, what I'm going to do. 64, Nintendo 64. Absolutely. I just played, my, my friend has one of those. I just played like like OG Mario Kart and Smash Brothers. Like, yeah, dude. She's like, come over, like, we'll play, you know, Smash Brothers. I'm like, okay, she's got like a, you know, a Switch or a, a yeah. Wii U or something. No, 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 mm-hmm. N64. Like, do you have Goldeneye? No. Ah, okay. So it's not right. so it's not perfect. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you, Golden Eye. Yeah. I, I get why people enjoyed it. I had such a hard time with it. Really? Because maybe my controller sucked at the time. Well, they but, all kind of sucked. I mean, you, that's, you're, you're, you know, half of the controller. You're you're leaving out half of the controller when you when you're holding it, right? Yeah. There's the D pad over there, but you're not even able to touch that if you got the the your thumb on the joystick and the and the Z button in the back. I get blisters on my oh, sure. thumb from the uh, Mario Kart racing. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I, you know what I, Jason, I'm getting you know passionate. What? You know what? And when I get passionate, I get loud. Yeah. I used to, I miss real glitches. Real, real glitches. That, that wouldn't be oh. covered up by updates. 
Oh, yeah. Like on the uh, Mario Kart Racing 64. Mm -hmm. I would try to get off the map in some places. Sure, yeah. And when, whenever it would work, I'd be like, oh, I'm off the map. Yeah, and there's no, there's no patch coming in for that. There's no fix for that. That's yeah. just, that's shipped. That's, in, that's, in, that's a physical product in your, in, your, in your hands. The last time before updates was my PS PlayStation 2, I think. Because I never hooked yeah. it up to the internet. PlayStation 2? Yeah. Is that? Wait. Yeah, PlayStation 2. Yeah. Never hooked up yeah, one. PS2. Dante, wait, Devil May Cry was my first Devil game. Devil May Cry. That was your first game. On PS2. On PS2. What was the first, do you remember the first game you played? Like the very first video game? Mario. Mario. Super yeah. Mario Brothers 3. Super Mario Brothers 3. Yeah. Nintendo. Probably Super Mario World, I think. I had a Super Nintendo too, growing this, up. This is how I played it. I, I, I have videos of me as a kid, and I have my mouth open, and I, my tongue, you know, because I'm trying to <laughs> <Yeah>. like... Yeah. <laughs> It's like it's I'm like, having a seizure. It's like a musicians have like that rock face, but yours is just for, for playing video games. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, so we, somebody's gonna edit that. Something weird. <laughs> it's the internet. I don't care anymore. Yeah. Have at it. <laughs> hey, Jason. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> I've given I've given you permission that I don't have get permission to give. <laughs> Suing you? No, I'm kidding. Um. Uh, we still got a little bit more time. I want to make sure you're out of here at Great. an appropriate time because I want to make sure you go to the bachelor party. Gotta get this bachelor party. You're going to, like, fire cannons, go to gun range. I don't know, man. That's what I we'll want to do at my bachelor. I mean, I'm sure it'll be great. Yeah. You said you were going to throw a frisbee. So that's Absolutely. Cool. Or at least we're playing disc golf, so yeah. it'll be at least that cool. Okay. Okay. Disc golf is the one where there's like a metal thing, and yeah. if you you try to hit, it, mm -hmm. and it'll it's fall like in. chains for hold, falling from the like the yeah yeah. So do you run to the disc golf, or you just walk? You casual? walk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very laid back. It's very laid back. Yeah. Okay. So there's no like, is there gonna be? Do you feel like um, what's it called, when your friends get competitive? You feel like there's gonna be. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. And these are the guys I've known my entire life. They'll be, it'll be competitive. That's good. I think that yeah yeah absolutely. I think that's really important. Having good guy time every now and then. Yeah. I think that's good to balance things out. Because sure. you got to have people who keep you in check. Yes. Like me and my brothers, we rag on each other constantly in a loving way. Absolutely. But we're always just keeping each other in check, making sure, you know, if you do something silly, we're going to call you out on it. Mm -hmm. We're going to make fun of you. You're going to cry. A little bit. A little you're, bit. You're going to go in your room for mm -hmm. a few days. You're going to come out a new person. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to come out and you're going to thank us. Yeah. Because uh, you're not going to wear that dumb hat anymore or whatever the thing was. Yeah, my brother William likes your hat's to wear great. jackets. It's not, it's not about your hat. It's just a, it's the first thing that came to my head. No, that's fine. Because I, yeah. I, I, I used to wear dumb hats. That's why it came. Really? This, this hat's not. I don't think this hat's dumb. But I, I went through a, a very strong fedora phase. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For between oh. the, yeah, like uh. 19 to 22, 23. 22. 22 was the end of it. Yeah. Was it, was, it a little cringe? Oh, very, yes. v, v cringe, V cringe, yes. Oh. Yeah, there's plenty of, I'm sure there's plenty of photographic evidence out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had, I used to it's wear good. fedoras as well. Sure. And I saw, I have, I have a picture, I can't, it's way deep in the archive, but it's it's hard to look at. Oh, your, yeah. Your old expressive self. It's, yeah, yeah, well, we, we were all confused. Um <laughs> No, it's 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 hel it's a healthy it's healthy to be reminded of that. That's that's you know that's my old my friends that have known me my entire life will, if I'm if they you know get a little too big for my britches or whatever they'll go yeah remember how you used to wear fedoras, and then I'm like okay cool that's that's what I needed. Oh boy, yeah. I almost wear I have a plain black hat like that. I almost wore mm -hmm. that today. Oh wow, that would have been weird. Thank God. I mean, we would have clashed. Yeah, it would have been bad. The, the the audio listeners at home would have been furious. They would have. Yeah. They would have written letters. Absolutely. Not only to us, to Adobe, to the Federal Radio You're Commission. You're welcome, Adobe, for us not wearing the same hats. There you go. I, is the Federal Radio Commission a thing? I don't think it is, is it? No. No? All right. I just made something up. There you go. You think Maybe. of the FCC? Maybe. Federal Communications Commission? Communications is a broad term, so. It sure is. That scares me, too. Does... How do you guys major in communications in no. college? No. no. Okay. Neither, neither did I. <laughs> Wait, what did, what did you, where did you go to college? I went to the California Lutheran University, which sounds like a Christian school, because it kind of is, but I got my degree in philosophy, so. Oh, I minored in philosophy. Did you? Yeah. Oh, cool. Sisters. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Jason's like, 
Get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, not really, but that's weird. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll say that. We're going to end it on that. No, <laughs> um, w- how often, for listeners, uh, they're going to follow you on Instagram, right? So they yes. can check out the latest sketches and yes. the latest news on you. So how often are you going to post, do you think? Uh, meat grapes will be probably once or twice a week. Okay. Uh, for me, on my personal page... It, I, it's it's usually at least once a week. I, I try to do two or three uh, okay. per week. Um, but it's 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 tough to create content. Like I, I I yeah I'm like I don't know what to, do I just take a picture in front of anything? Like what do I what what do I do? I'm still I'm still learning. Bear with me, people. But I'm yeah. I'm I'm tr- I'm, tr- I'm trying my best. <laughs> Why are you crying, Jason? What? I'm so- <laughs> No, it's fine. I'm gonna just. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> cut, cut the feed. Cut the feed. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't know how those quote unquote YouTubers or those people who are Vine famous, and and then they went up to their Instagram and be, you know, when yeah. Vine died, I don't know how somebody can vlog or put up a sketch a day. And I'll be honest with you, I've seen a lot of those ones who are like super popular. And it's not oh yeah, funny. well, the the reason that they can put up so many sketches every day is because none of them are very good. <laughs> well, for some people, some yeah. of them are great, but like, yeah, that's the, that's the that's the answer. There is none of them. The, not can all I? Of them are very good. Listen, I know it's hard. It's hard to put up. Sure, content. absolutely. I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the way of thinking like, okay, maybe cut down the amount you put a week instead of daily Mm -hmm. because like some of the stuff you're putting out is crap and then you're going to lose followers eventually if it's right maybe it depends i mean if it's like what what do you value more consistency or good content if you if you focus too much on creating only good content you might disappear as long as you both well both is both is is ideal certainly but both is difficult to be consistent and be consistently creating good content that's that's hard so I think the safer yeah. route is to just make content and just put stuff out constantly so you're still staying relevant in people's minds as opposed to, I'm only going to post when it's really good, and then they forget about you. Yeah. that I know it's difficult, but I would hate putting out something that's not... I would too. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, but no. when it's bad, you're like, why was... Like, I would have just not posted this. Yeah. I don't know. That's just my thing. And then I hate the ones that get like lazy, they just want views. They'll have a chick all of a sudden in her underwear. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is why this has right. like, oh, this two million is views. Softcore, okay, great. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm like, okay, no. Yeah, well, yeah. That, is, that is like half of Instagram though. It is like, oh, you're, you're an attractive girl. Okay, and look at your feed like that's, oh, that's what you are. Okay, cool, that's fine. Um, great. No judgment. That's, no, but, like that's, but but that's, that's, that's 100% what it, I'm like, you know, thinking about what can I be doing, doing differently? Like, what, how can I, you know, expand my brand or whatever? What are other people doing? And it looks like, oh, you're just, you're hot. Okay. That doesn't help me. <laughs> like, I don't know how to, yeah. I don't want, I don't want to just, oh, okay. All right. Uh, what else? What else can I do? I'll just do, I'll do them instead sketch comedy. That, that's what I'll do. See, then I think it circles back to like knowing yourself and knowing what yeah. you want to put out there and what yeah. you love and enjoy. And yep. I think when whenever somebody is truly connected with that, those are the accounts that really, like, have a strong, loyal following, I should say. And You'd also, so, yeah. like, I don't know, they they stay in for the long haul, you know? Yeah. You hope so. Well, yeah. I don't know. I, dude, I, yeah, I know I know you got to go, but the I'm whole... Oh, I'm, 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 I'm okay. We can yeah. hang out for a bit. Um. I hate to even bring it up again. I really do, Uh-oh. but it just annoys Here me it comes. so much. What is the that? whole persona, and you might know them. Oh, Logan Paul and Jake Paul. Oh, I don't people. know them. Okay, no, I can't stand them. Did you watch their the documentary series about them? No. Oh yeah, there was like a it's like a I forget how many parts there are, but there's multiple parts to a documentary. I think it's Shane Dawson, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, oh did yes. A, did a, like a behind the scenes, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, like. It's a documentary. Yeah. Is it good? I haven't watched it. Okay. Cause right. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not that interested, but if you are, I've, I've heard it's, I've heard it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, like a waking nightmare watching it. Um, but if that's your thing, then give it a, give it a, give it the googs. I, and watch it, watch it up. Here, here, 
and I, I'm trying to be empathetic too mm -hmm. at, at times because I'm like, okay, what if I remember me as a teenager in high school? I was like, what if I all of a sudden got all this money and fame? Then yes, and I'm like, yes. Oh, when I think about that, I'm like, I gotta tone it. I can't be so judgmental. Would I because, really be any different if that if I was in his situation? Would I really be any different? What, would I? Yeah. yeah. Um, you can't know. I can't actually. I mean, yeah. I know I grew up a little differently than they did, like with my parents' structure and right. everything, but yeah. I don't know, man. It's just hard to watch sometimes, you know, and and their perspective on everything. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, where, do, where where's this dude going to be when he's 40? Is he still making content for 11-year-olds saying, buy my merch in weird music videos? Maybe. That's so <laughs> and, and maybe he's still making money. Because at the end of the day, that's, that's, the, that's the thing is they're making money. Yeah, but I bet I bet you anything, Jason, that gets so dull after years. I would have thought it would be dull already. Here we are. Uh, they're still young. I think if, no, you're, I know. You're, if, you're, if they're hitting their late 30s, I think a lot of people, what's that guy, Dan Benz, Bilzerian? Dan Bilzerian or something like that? He kind of briefly talked about it on the Joe Rogan podcast. It starts getting oh. numb. Like, you know, you start sleeping with one, two girls, and then you're like, oh, I'll just sleep with four, I'll just sleep with five, and then it's like, this is getting, it's not as thrilling anymore. Like, I can just do all this stuff now. So where's the thrill-seeking Oh, at? so is there, is there, are their antics going to be, are they going to peter out and become dull for people? Is that what you're, is that the No, thing? dull for themselves. Like, oh. They have to keep going to oh, the Oh, they have to continue to, to escalate get that new the, right, right. Thrill, well, it's like a drug, heart. right? You have to keep getting more and more and more. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, it's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about yeah, how yeah, high yeah, I have yeah. to go to, to stay Logan Paul relevant. But you're like, you're like, dude, I got a bachelor party. I don't care what they do. No, it's, it's, it's an addiction, I feel like, to a certain. I know I'm just, I'm just talking out loud right now, too, about it because I, it's such a weird world. It's such a mindset that I'm not. Yeah in tune or on, on the same vibrational level with, yeah. that I'm like, how do you even get out of something like that? If you were stuck in that kind of hell and you don't even know you're in a hell. Does that make sense? <laughs> right, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, I don't know. The, that I don't that know. whole phenomenon of the, the YouTube star or the, the Vine star or mm -hmm. whatever, it, it, it if I feel like an old man saying I don't understand it, but because there's always, you know, the, the, the previous generation is always saying, oh, kids these days, kids these days, whatever. They, kid, they've been saying that for years. But I feel like there has been at least one, maybe two, sort of generational shifts that have occurred in my life. Yeah. And one of them, for sure, is the social media star, that the, 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 the YouTube celebrity, is a thing that I didn't grow up with. Yeah. So I can't really understand. It's like God, right? If you don't grow up with God, sometimes like a lot oh, of times yeah, you yeah. don't like you won't ever really understand unless you're sort of maybe your your life falls apart, whatever it is. You know, if you're raised with it, you'll always kind of understand it. Yeah. But like I wasn't raised with YouTube stars. I don't. I will never yeah. understand that, and that makes me feel old. Yeah. But I'm okay with feeling old. Yeah. Same. Yeah. It's fine. But that's 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 what it is for me. I'm I'm okay with not not understanding it fully or getting the thrill, you know, like the, like, I don't know how these subscribers work. Do they just wait for them to post and like, oh, I got to watch the latest I, Shane Dawson, I, which I, actually I, Shane I Dawson's not too bad. The, I, I've kind of watched him in the beginning and when I was in college yeah. and he would do a lot of like sketches. I'm like, oh, these are like ridiculous characters. Oh, he's cool. doing. They're like really funny. And then he started doing the vlogs and they started branching out and then he did a movie and I was like, oh, this is really interesting how this guy is evolving. And, but now, again, I don't know where he's at now, but his whole life is vlogged or, you know what yeah. I mean? That's what it feels like. And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. Crazy times, man. It's, yeah, this, it's. But it's a crazy world we're living in. I will say this. Yeah. You seem to have, and I truly mean this, such a good vibe about you. Oh, thank you. And you seem to have such a good foundational base. As soon as you walked in, I was like, okay, this guy's going to be fun to talk oh, cool. to or he's going to be normal. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because, dude, it's a crapshoot. When people, they're just recommended, I'm like, oh, cool, they've worked or whatever. And yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, we'll see how they go. Yeah. Are they normal? Or are they, are they shy? <laughs> are they a little weird? Which is totally fine. Yeah. But, 
But how hard am I gonna have to work as a host to make this to make this pa- palatable? Yeah. Oh, it, that's the fun part, though. I was oh yeah, talking oh, good. about it yeah. the other day, and I, you know, I hope you start your own podcast soon. And I would like to. Yeah. I'll tell you this: it's helped me articulate and develop ideas I've had in my head. And talking that's about that's it. part of what I want to do. So I, I I love the idea of just like recording, you know, a conversation with whoever, and then just seeing what what comes out. That's uh, great. And then it's all it's all recorded, and then you can be like here. Listen to me ramble about this thing. Yeah, and I think it's so important just to be honest with yeah. whatever is present for you in, in your life at that moment and never be – I shouldn't say never because you should never ever say never, I think. Maybe. Unless you're saying never say never. Right. Because then you're saying never. But you never – now I'm in a loop. Yep. And that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason, you're on all the so- social medias. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Twitter and Instagram, for Twitter, sure. Instagram. Um, yeah, I don't have a Snapchat because I feel like that's another thing that I don't, don't I don't get. Hey, don't have it. I'm I don't get it. You, I'm telling you right now. I don't know what it is. Don't get a Snapchat. I had it for a while and I didn't use it because it scared me. <laughs> Not like scared me, but like it, it <laughs> like it, in the way that like an old man is scared of a, of a of a typewriter when it comes out. You know what I mean? Like it's like that that like new evolution oh. of technology. I'm like I don't know what this thing is. I don't know how to I don't know how to work it. Yeah. People were scared of typewriters, right, when those first came out? People were scared of books when they first came out. What? Oh, yeah. Books are, like, from, like... Oh, yeah, this... no. People would say, you know, oh, they're going to f- fill their heads with all these kinds of weird ideas. And yeah, every oh, new, you know like, what? evolution of technology or whatever it is has always scared the, you know, the, the, the ruling class, if you will. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Yeah. I have... Yeah, no, no. I have personal Old experience. people were scared of typewriters when they first happened. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it. It's, it's, it probably happened. That's a T-shirt, sir. Old people oh. were, were scared of typewriters. Of typewriters. Yeah. And it's your face going, <laughs> that's the face. Just that shot right there. Yeah. You let's make a right t-shirt there. out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, thanks so much for coming on the Happy show. Happy to be here, yeah. And uh, we'll definitely have you back on if you ever want to plug your new show. Absolutely. Or yes. any, uh, again, new meat grapes, which I feel so meat uncomfortable grapes. every time I say it. Meat grapes. Yeah. I just go like that. That's that's term. good. That's what we wanted. Meat grapes. If we <laughs> wanted something just kind of nonsense that, uh, <laughs> that yeah, yeah. You know what I think of? The what, do, tur- what do you think of? The turkey, uh, what is this thing? Oh, oh the, the the gizzard? Yeah, yeah, I think of a turkey gizzard. Most people think of balls. I wasn't going to say um, that. Which which is not what, <laughs> what, what we were intending. Uh, yeah. So if, if, that's, if, that's, if that's what you think of, sir, then that oh. says more about you than it does about me. I love how honest you are. It, was a, it, it, came, from a, it, it came from an off-the-cuff joke. It was a cannibalism joke, actually, that my buddy Tyson made, and he, he I forget the whole like way into it, but the line was, uh, the, the best thing about eating babies is that their toes are like seedy little meat grapes. And I was like, wait, hold on. What's that last thing you said? Meat grapes? That's our, that's our sketch comedy group name. And he was like, no, that's a bad idea. I'm like, I know, but it's dumb. As you pan over to the other guy in the room, was like, uh, "Can we address the, yeah. the 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 joke part, sir? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are we not gonna?" <laughs> I forget what it was, but that was the line, oh. and that that's the part that stuck with me. And but when with us. It zooms and, out. And, and now with you. It zooms out. You guys are in a courtroom. Everybody's like, "Hey, we're in the <laughs> middle of a trial." Uh, all right, uh, <laughs> dude. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Michael. Yes, sir. Hey. Michael. Thanks. You're welcome. And we out. We're out. That's it. We done. Uh huh. Thank you to our sponsors. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Better Booch. That's true. Better Booch. Big shout out to Better Booch, the best, the best kombucha take. <laughs> uh, thank you to you, the listeners. Thank you to Adobe Radio. Um, I already said thank you to you, Michael, in the beginning of the show. I'm not going to say thank you again. It's okay. That's right. It is okay. <laughs> I'm not going to say thank you to this middle camera that decided to freak out on us today. It did. Hey, middle camera, do your job. I'm sure there's a, a weird kink in one of the cords. Speaking of kinks, Michael, I got this kink in my back. Actually, I don't. I'm feeling pretty good lately. Um, thank you again to the listeners. Thank you to Jason Dolly. Thank you to Stagecoach. Thank you to Steph. Thank you to Air, to the universe, and to you. Have a great one, y'all. Bye. Bye.